Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. The Obama administration's seizure of phone records of Associated Press is clearly a message, first of all, to whistleblowers. If we can go after AP, we can go after anybody. And whoever you might phone, we can get hold of those records. And of course, if they can go after AP, they can go after any journalist. So it's also a message to journalists across the country. Now joining us to talk about all of this is Kathleen McClellan. She's a National Security and Human Rights Counsel at the Government Accountability Project, a leading whistleblower rights organization in DC. Thanks for joining us, Kathleen. Thanks for having me. So first of all, how do you think this will affect whistleblowers? You have, uh, as an organization and you as counsel have represented some whistleblowers. Perhaps you can tell us a bit about that. And, and what, what, what does this do to the next person thinking about picking up the phone and calling the press? Well, the Obama administration's unprecedented attack on whistleblowers and on the media through, by using the Espionage Act to indict people for alleged leaking of classified information, which is almost always actually whistleblowing, um, has already had a tremendous chilling effect on both whistleblowers and on the media. National security whistleblowers have next to no legal protections as it is. And now, not only do they have to worry about all of the normal retaliation um, and the career suicide that whistleblowing can be for national security employees, they have to worry about being criminally prosecuted for disclosing waste, fraud, abuse, and government illegalities. And the journalists now have to worry about the same sort of accusations. So the, the, I guess the argument you would get from the Obama administration would be we have a right to defend national security, we have a right to national secrets, and there is a process internally to do all of these things if you, if you want to complain. So what's wrong with that argument? Well, in the case of Thomas Drake, the National Security Agency whistleblower, who's a client of ours at GAP, he uh, went through all of those proper internal channels. He went to the Department of Defense Inspector General. He went to the uh, Senate and House Intelligence Committees, and that did not protect him. And in fact, it made him a target. And he and the other people at the National Security Agency, his fellow whistleblowers who complained about waste, massive billion-dollar boondoggle-type waste at the National Security Agency and um, unconstitutional domestic spying, uh, they were all targeted with a federal criminal investigation. And it turned out that despite the government's claims that Mr. Drake had put lives at risk and endangered soldiers on the field, despite those claims that the government made in his case, none of the information that he was accused of improperly retaining was actually properly classified. So while the government will consistently assert that it's national security at play, oftentimes it's the fact that the government wants to hide embarrassing or illegal conduct. And what about when they're national security issues? I mean, if you take something like the Bradley Manning, uh, you know, leak, the, the uh, wiki, that he leaked to WikiLeaks, uh, they're certainly arguing those are national security issues, and, uh, and they're saying the, the revelations jeopardize security in some way. I'm not sure they've actually given any proof or evidence how it did, but one supposes they could try to make that argument. Uh, do you think there should be some kind of limits on wh when someone can leak and what the press should do with it? Well, absolutely, there's properly classified information. And um, the, the regulations and the statutes that govern classified information define it pretty well. The problem is uh, everybody in government is incentivized to classify, but they're not incentivized to declassify or to not classify. And so there's rampant overclassification plaguing the system. Of course, there are things that should be secret. The problem is the temptation to classify things that are embarrassing or that cover up misconduct is too great. And the consequences for overclassifying are next are nothing. There are no consequences really for overclassifying, despite the fact that government regulations require consequences for overclassifying, just like they require consequences for failing to classify or disclosing classified information. I should add to the Bradley Manning comment I made that I think it is as many as three million people had access to the same information Bradley Manning had access to. So if you really want any of that to be secret, you don't put it on a network that three million people can get at. It's true. And is, is it a secret if you can share it with a million people? <laughs> 
But uh, so, so let's go back to the AP case. Apparently, the, the Department of Justice actually violated their own guidelines on the AP. They didn't. They are supposedly uh, need to negotiate with the with the news agency before they take measures like seizing things. They're supposed to notify the news agency that they're doing it, and they didn't. Um, why do you think in this case they they were they were actually went beyond their own guidelines? Well, I think that if you, if the Justice Department had gone to the AP and negotiated like they were supposed to, it, the AP held the story in question. So it's not as though the AP wasn't willing to talk, it seems. But I think as far as notifying the AP that they were going to subpoena such a broad range of records, uh, 20 phone lines, and I think uh, the president, the CEO of AP has said over 100 journalists use those lines, um, the AP would have had an opportunity to go to court to fight to quash that subpoena. Um, with such a broad record, a uh, broad range of records being requested, I would think that I would suspect that the AP might have done, have chosen to go to court to quash that subpoena. But um, by going around the regulation, the Justice Department denied AP that opportunity and the records were turned over already. No, um, why no. the Justice Department decided to ignore their regulation, I think, um, remains to be seen. Yeah, I mean, it seems, I mean, you can't go after AP without sitting and having a conversation in a room saying, you know, if we're going after AP, it's like one of the leading news organizations in the country. Uh, it's going to be news everywhere. Eventually, this has to come out, although you know, AP found out about it, uh, you know, what, two months later. Uh, the, the, you know, you, you don't do this unconsciously, go after such a, a news organization with such high profile. So that they wanted to send this message that they would go after this and, and in this way, no? I think it definitely does send a message. I mean, whether or not they wanted to send the message or not is, you know, the, the administration seems to say when it's convenient that the, it's not a policy of a crackdown on, on leakers or on whistleblowers. It's just individual cases. But then when they want to send a message and they want to keep people quiet, um, they they tout these prosecutions. And when they want to sound tough on national security, they tout it. And um, with the Espionage Act prosecutions, whistleblowing was effectively criminalized. And now um, with the AP and with the latest development uh, in the Stephen Kim case, another Espionage Act case, where the government actually accused a reporter of violating the Espionage Act simply because he was reporting the news. Um, the news gathering process is, is being criminalized. Yeah, and, explain um, more about the details of that. Well, the Stephen Kim case, uh, Stephen Kim is another individual who's been accused of violating the Espionage Act. And in that case, the Justice Department sought a warrant uh, based upon what they called probable cause that the reporter who uh, the Kim had been alleged to have contact with was violating the Espionage Act because he was somehow soliciting or encouraging the disclosure of classified information. That's essentially what all national security reporters do every day. That's the news gathering process. They ask sources for information. And with so much information classified, I think uh, last in the fiscal year of 2011 alone, uh, the, the, the government made some over 90 million decisions to classify something. Uh, with so much information classified, that's a lot of risk to journalists. And classified information, not only do journalists request it every day, but it appears in the paper every day. And the government is the biggest leaker of all in disclosing that classified information. So when you have um, uh, the Justice Department going to a court and saying there's probable cause to believe that a reporter is committing espionage by reporting allegedly classified information, uh, that that essentially is going to criminalize the news gathering process. And so now, you know, with whistleblowers being prosecuted, whistleblowing is being criminalized, and now the news gathering process is being criminalized, and the chilling effect has already been felt. And with each new development, it just seems to get uh, more and more severe retaliation and more and more severe consequences for reporting the news. Now, some people have been making the criticism uh, of sorts that a lot of the sort of liberal NGOs, organizations, uh, liberals in the, in the news media, have been kind of soft on Obama up until this point, in the sense that the NDAA, for example, that was passed that allows in, in, the military to indefinitely intern people that are accused of somehow aiding or having something to do with the Taliban or Al-Qaeda, uh, essentially waiving any rights 
rights to trial, uh, and, and, and other types of measures that have been passed under the Obama administration have not received as much attention as many people think they would have if it had been a Bush administration, for example. Um, now people are, are raising their voices more because it's AP and they're directly going after news media. But do you think there's some, it's fair that critique that a lot of voices have been kind of quiet up until now about what President Obama has been doing? There have been quiet voices, and uh, I think you know, some former Bush administration officials were quoted as saying, well, we'd never be able to get away with this. That said, there have been a lot of voices speaking out, um, including um, Chris Hedges and Daniel Ellsberg and their lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of uh, the NDAA's indefinite detention provision, including um, lots of whistleblowers, including a lot of uh, nonprofits. And, and while... Um, some media organizations have taken a while to wake up to the fact that the, that the media is really being targeted here. Uh, I think that's happening now, and that's only a good thing. And I, I think the media is only going to become more and more concerned as their sources dry up uh, because people are scared of talking as a result of these prosecutions and as they themselves become targets of uh, criminal investigations. Right. Okay, thanks very much for joining us, Kathleen. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.